Happy Friday and welcome to the local twist with Tam and Dish, brought to you by Studio One Salon and Day Spa. And Napa of Park Falls and Mercer. And I am wearing Napa blue today. And I have a Napa blue hat. <laughs> Things on the list for today, the eight words that are not words. How screwed up is your state? How screwed up is the state of Chicago? It's the state of Chicago? The state of Chicago. The state Ladies of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, Chicago in, has, has, has become as its own state. As in the state of mind. Ah. Um, and I did a little research okay. this last weekend. Let's not preface that with anything. Let's just right, say exactly. the state of Chicago. Also happenings on Highway 111 in Catawba, Wisconsin. And also what to do if you're down on your luck. We have some great tips for you to help you out. Can we start with that? No, we should end it with that. Okay. Actually, first of all, something very exciting in your life. Yes, yes, yes. My yes. son graduated from Navy Boot Camp. If you can all see that. Great Congratulations list. to Levi. Thank You've you. have made it through. Um, so he is down in a school in Pensacola, and we took a trip down to Chicago. And when I say the state of Chicago, I am talking about the state of mind that Chicago is in. I refer to it as a vacation to Chicago, and my fiancé, Jason, and everyone that we know on Highway 111 said that is not a vacation to go to Chicago. Well, no, it's always no, been it's in the a, past. It's a chore. It's a... Well, I'd never seen it as a chore, and I was really excited about going to the Shed Aquarium and the Field Museum and taking the train, leaving the vehicle in Waukegan and going straight into the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. However, I have become spoiled because when we get in our vehicle here in Price County, we get in our vehicle, and if the store is five minutes away, it takes you about three and a half minutes to get there. Yeah. Depending on if you're driving like I do or like Paul does. Otherwise, that can take like 10 minutes. So, when we got to Chicago, you are a slow driver. I am a slow driver. It is constantly hurry up and wait. Mm -hmm. Hurry up Everything. and wait. Yes. And one of our sponsors, our title sponsor, Studio One Salon and Baseball, prides themselves on always being up to date on fashion and hair. Mm -hmm. And we get teased a lot by the people in Illinois, specifically in the Chicago suburbs, about being so far behind in fashion, ladies and Paul, with the tie thing, don't be afraid. I spent four days in Chicago, and I don't know how they know what is in fashion, because there is such a wapatuli yeah. of not only races and fashion and sweatpants and thin and big and crack showing that they were not plumbers at all. It's basically like the epitome of the melting pot. I, I don't know I mean, how how Price County gets such a bad rap that, oh, you guys are so far behind fashion, you get everything two years to five years behind everyone else. Yeah, but we still look good. It doesn't matter when we get it. We still look darn good doing well, it. Well, not everyone's tying their tie like yours. In fact, I didn't notice that you had the plumber tie this week. I invented how That's do you, it. Do, do you tie. sit home and tie your ties and figure out how you're going to tie them so that they have little bubbles and little flowers and rosettes like somebody yes. decorating a cake? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Very good. So, gentlemen, I, don't, if you're going to wear a tie, let me tell you this, wear it right, okay? If you're going to wear a tie, it's because it's a special occasion. It's not just because, well, unless you're... Well, he has to wear a tie because we're... I wear players. a tie every single day, and I, and I pride myself on mm -hmm. looking good. I, I do the best that I can. And I'm happy you see you're growing some hair. That's really nice. But if you're the average Price Countyan, mm -hmm. you don't wear a tie every day. No. You wear Most people don't. Around, a no, and polo Price, shirt or... You have know. you noticed, though, too, that a lot of people in this area, and this is not a slam... They don't, they'll break out a tie for weddings or a funeral. Yeah. And usually the tie will come undone about one beer into the reception. Exactly. But and that's when just that tie, the funeral. Yeah. When that tie is tied, make sure it looks good. Okay? It's very, very simple to get a simple knot to look good. Can you give us, like, tie lessons on one of these Fridays? I would absolutely love to. And if anybody wants to learn, I'll give you one right now. <laughs> the, the tie that I'm wearing, the knot that I'm wearing now is called the Eldridge Knot. You're actually... Which uh, is very difficult to do, and it's obviously even more difficult to take apart. But I am going to give you one quick lesson on how easy it is to tie a tie and make it look good. Now, anybody can do this. You can do this with one arm after I get this done. Okay, this is what's called a Pratt or a four in the hand knot. Very simple. You know what I find really interesting okay. is that you can tie these ties with these amazing knots, but you can't cast a fishing rod. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's very simple. Okay. Big end, mm -hmm. little end. Okay. Now you're going to tie this one with the big end, okay? You wrap the big end around. Just make that. Go around again. Go around the front again. So basically make one and a half revolutions. <laughs> Notice. 
the disc is nice and straight across. Bring the big end up and through. Do you ever tie them too tight? No. Mm. I'm too good. And then just bring it down. Now obviously it's not to length because I'm sitting down, but I wanted to show you this. And if you can see this, this is what's called an asymmetrical knot, okay? It's very is that simple. Is a regular pastor knot? This is a regular pastor. It's very simple. You get a nice little line. It, it's nice and neat. Mm -hmm. And the best part about this is, is that if you have the right length when you stand up and you do want to loosen mm -hmm. it, it's the perfect knot oh, to just, just loosen. Down. And it keeps its form. It's the biggest thing. Oh, you look can, at that. You can still look good with this knot. Can I be honest with you? See this? This doesn't look like trash, right? No, that looks and nice. And it's nice and loose, yeah. and you can breathe. You know what I? You know what was really funny when I first met you when we first started working together, and I saw your tie and it was different. Mm -hmm. I thought you, just you, thought I, I, thought you were, I thought you were you new thought to ties and you had no idea what you were doing. So, gentlemen, if you're gonna wear a tie, look good. There's a reason why you're wearing it, okay? Now, if you're at a funeral, you're looking good for the family, or to pick up chicks. If you're at a wedding... You're looking good to pick up chicks. If, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and if you're at a wedding, you want to look good because it's a, a nice thing and to pick up chicks. And if you're at a family reunion... Don't wear a tie. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things that I noticed this week across Facebook is they were making fun of the United States... Sh I'm sorry, United States of shame. Wisconsin came in with a high percentage of binge drinking. I don't believe that. Wisconsin is the number one state in the nation for binge, for drinking. binge drinking. Now, if you'll take a look, and this is a side note on this, and I want you to get to this because it's really good. What? But um, in the top 20 party schools in the United States, Wisconsin has four. Right. Now, we lost our number one ranking, UW-Madison. So, guys, get back on the bus. Okay? We want that number one spot back. Really, um, We're good at a lot of things. Drinking's one. Those of us parents who have children that are in school would rather not. I'm, well, like obviously you have to be the... 21. Oh yeah. Okay. I would never, never promote drinking. <laughs> I like this one right here. The nerdiest state from this poll is Indiana. The, the nerdiest. The nerdiest state. How do you dictate who is the nerdiest state? I would have to. Well, it depends on your classification of nerdy, I guess. I mean, they actually have, they post, well, obviously, Illinois with robbery. I would have thought that, did you think that Illinois would come in first with robbery? I, actually, I would, yes, I would. Because of not just Chicago and the suburbs, but also um, the Rockford, Illinois area is big on that. Now, they're posting that high school graduation is a problem in Texas. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's because are you got to find a high school in Texas. Are they graduating and, and that's a problem with their graduation or they're not graduating? Um, I, I wasn't really sure about that. You look on that Texas, one right there. Lowest high school graduation ah, okay. rate in Texas. Is in Texas. Yes. Gonorrhea is a real problem in Mississippi. And the worst... Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Well, we know where we won't be moving to. Yes. I did... Hello. Identity theft in Florida. So make sure that your grandma's wallet is safe if she is moving to Florida. Last Friday the 13th, uh, a caller reported he was being held against his will. Listen to this. He was being held against his will at a bowling alley between Phillips and Prentice. Now, if you are not from this area, that's like a eight-mile radius right in there where the, that borders up. The caller asked the deputy. Yes, but there's only one bowling alley between <laughs> Phillips and Prentice. <laughs> the caller... Asked the deputy to track him down by the phone number. So he called and he said, I'm being held against my will at the bowling alley. But they were nice enough to let me use their phone. <laughs> <laughs> find me. F find me by the number that I'm calling you from. And this, we're not laughing at anyone else's no, no, We want to share with you the things that go on here. Yeah. A deputy called and spoke with a, he did track down the number. Yeah. Called back and spoke with the nurse at the hospital who confirmed that the caller was a patient at said hospital. She said, he was probably confused, and the department received two more additional phone calls from the subject requesting assistance. A deputy spoke again with the nurse, and she said she would take care of the problem. Now, okay, obviously there's more to the story than, than what we're getting in the paper here. I get that. Mm -hmm. What, okay, you're dispatched, and you get a phone call from a, a young man saying that he's being held against his will at a bowling alley. First of all, in Price County, a man's not going to call and tell you that he's being held against his will unless his wife, he wants the record for his wife. Yeah. And secondly, what leads you to call a specific place and say, hey, is this dude a resident 
of your facility. Well, he, he, they responded to that phone number, just said phone number that he was saying track me down at. But wouldn't you just, if you're in Price County and you're Yeah, but how would they get their phone? If the kid's in the... Probably call her ID. Well, I get that. My point is this. If he's calling from the bowling alley, is, was he at the bowling alley? Or no, was he, was he at the, the ho hospital? He was in the hospital. He's a well, patient. see, that's a completely different story then. <laughs> Now I get it. <laughs> well, and the other thing, too, I mean, if you were working for the Price County Dispatch, and we love them, they're excellent, don't pull me over, there's only one bowling alley. Can't you call the bowling alley and say, we're on our way? Could you go outside and check and see could if this you, gentleman... Could you run into the John real quick and see if there's a boy in there? <laughs> a call reported that a juvenile male, approximately 13 years old, who was riding his bicycle on State Highway 111, which is very close to where I live, North of U.S. Highway 8, flagged her down looking for a ride to Lac de Flambeau. The caller asked the child if she could call the police for help, and he said no. No, I did see this boy, and I felt bad because he was just passing my road, mm -hmm. my driveway, and later, about an hour later, he was riding with a backpack, same kid, same backpack, down by Lake 10, and circling in the highway, and all of a sudden did a roundabout turn. Now, what makes me really sad is, where are your parents? And why are you looking to go to Lac de Flambeau? And why are you riding up and down a highway? And I certainly hope that someone did stop and help this boy. Absolutely. We pray for, obviously, for his safety. And, you know, to your point exactly, you know, how, how did he get there? You know, you what know makes, and, and this is, and we're not going to go into politics at all, but what makes me really sad, someday, though, so. what makes me really sad is that so many people complain about the state that our nation is in. Can you please just check and see where your kids are at before mm. you talk politics, before you do anything else? And, and if you want to yell at me for saying this, that's absolutely fine. But I do believe that if, if you don't know where your children are and you're not taking responsibility for them, that's a big contribution to why we are in the state that we are in. Well, absolutely. And it, it, it falls back to the, to the same old thing that we should have always gone by. And, you know, look at yourself and your house before mm. you chastise somebody else. And we see it all the time, and I see it all the time, and I, like you said, we're not going to get into it too, too much, but if you're looking for an opinion on your life around here, mm -hmm. everybody else has got one. And everyone will know more about your life than you possibly. And they know how you should do things better, mm -hmm. which is amazing. And, and don't get me wrong, you know, I am not a, a saint by any means, but I pride myself on making sure that my life is in order first, and I will never criticize you for your mm -hmm. life unless you do something abnormally stupid and then we'll put it on the show. But make sure your house is in order first and make sure, obviously, your kids are taken care of, you know number what I, one. You know what I've always said, too, is a lot of these children, or a lot of parents, you know, if, if you're in your young 19, 20 and you've had a, been dealt a bad hand, get help. You know, I've always said to students that I've talked to or t spoke at different schools, what you, what you are is a direct reflection of your parents. Mm -hmm. What happens and what you are after you turn 18 years old is a direct reflection of you. And if you feel that you've been dealt a bad hand or you didn't get a fair shake, then change it. Don't sit there and blame it on someone else. Exactly. There's more than blame ample. Blame it on Paul. Blame it on me if you have to. <laughs> I'll take that. I've got big enough shoulders. Um, but you have a point. Once you turn 18, you're an adult. Mm -hmm. And now you have to face life, which sucks, but it's not going away. So, you know, we live in a, in a society where a lot of people's parents are divorced. A lot of people have been abused when they were younger or, or gone through different things. You don't need to have a bad adulthood just because you don't feel that you had it fair when you were younger. That's right. Only you can make a difference what for else? you. <laughs> what else do you have? Speaking of that, if you were dealt a bad hand or oh, yeah, if you are having problems, if you are down on your luck, I have something to help you. It's called the local newspaper. What is it? What Let is me it? tell you this. Okay. Now... Say, you know, this isn't, we talked about this before, so this isn't a high income area. Right. right? We, uh, we don't make millions and millions of dollars. We make we about $34,000 a year. Yeah, and, and thank God for that. But there is hope. Say, you are looking to remodel your house. Right. Uh, you need some paint. What do you do? Local newspaper to give away many paints, stains, cleaning supplies, and miscellaneous items. So there you go. Done. House cleaned, painted, taken For care of. Free. If you don't have furniture or if something broke, you need to replace it. To give away floor lamps, 25 inch TV, what? lounge chair, two lawn What's chairs with tables, and a computer stand. You've just outfitted your house. What Better you, yet, what if you don't have a house? If you don't have a house, to give away 
12 foot by 60 foot mobile home. Yay. Furnace, water heater, bathroom sink, tub, toilet included. You know what this Boom. you know what this really sounds like? It sounds like a divorce. It sounds like she <laughs> threw him out and all of his stuff is available to give away. Uh, you know, we actually so don't... So now you can actually, you, you have a place to live. You can paint it however you want to, stay in the deck. And have a television. And have a television with, you know, a table, chair, computer desk. Better yet, cherry on top. <laughs> you got your new free house. You got your new free paint to spruce it up. You got your new free furniture and you love music. Bam. Local newspaper. <laughs> Baldwin. What? Orgasonic Oregon with bench to give away. For free. Ladies everything and gentlemen, great right to you from the local twist. Free house, free everything. Just go pick it up. Done. And, and if you need any other discounts, you can definitely tune in to the 98Q Shopping Show on Saturday mornings and get your discounts right there, too. Absolutely. We want to thank our title sponsor. Studio One Salon and Day Spa for keeping Paul's hair beautiful. Absolutely. I, this is natural, baby. I don't need any of this. <laughs> And Napa of Park Falls and Mercer, thank you very much. But before we end, before we go, I have a very... Anybody who knows me knows I'm a grammar freak. Oh, I, no! I cannot stand it when people speak unintelligently. And I really, really can't stand it when we make up words. So I have devised a list. The okay. top eight words that I hear all the time that are not words. Okay. Number right. eight, height. Not a word. Height. Height is not a word. Height. Width is a word to describe how wide something is. But when you're talking about how tall something is, it's height. Not height. There's no H at the end. Height. Okay. Undoubtedly. That is undoubtedly the dumbest Where word. Where did you collect these? Do you hear these when people I hear are... these all the time, so I, I write them down and remember okay. them. It's undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. I know it's a small change, but change it. It's not that hard. Supposably, another one that's very simple to change to say correctly. Supposedly, not supposably, supposedly. Supposedly, Paul has very good grammar. Yes, I think I think so. Thank you very much for noticing. Participator. <laughs> I like that one. My I son was that. a participator in the football <laughs> game last night. No, he was not. He's a participant. <laughs> so my son is not a participator in the Navy? He is not a participator in the Navy. No, he is a participant. Actually, no, it's just his job now. Um, firstly. <laughs> well, I don't know. This is your job. Firstly, let me tell you this. Firstly is not a word. Secondly is a word. Thirdly is a word. First of firstly, all. Firstly. First of all, or just first. I don't like Simple. that, though. I don't like it when you say just first. I don't like it when you talk, but I can't stop it. Irregardless of what I say, you are going to continue to talk. Irregardless is not a word. Regardless is a word. Irregardless does not make sense, period. This is one that you actually brought to my attention. I was really brought... Spect. Who? Oh, you spect me to talk to you now? Out of spec for you, I, I will drop all of those innuendos. Spect. There is something that goes before spect. Expect. Right? Respect. Anything. Just finish the word. It's not that difficult, folks. And one of the biggest pet peeves that I have are people who use superlatized superlatives. And yes, I just made that up because it makes sense now. So you can make up a word you cannot, that we cannot You cannot use a superlative with a superlative. Okay, people use this all the time. And the reason why I bring it to your attention is because I heard it on national TV. And I've heard it several times, especially with football broadcasts. Huger. Huger is not a word. Huger is not a word. Neither is hugest. Okay? Huger, just drop it. It's just huge, okay? It's huge. Speaking of it huge. It can't be the hugest thing I've ever seen. When you are seen. huge, you cannot hide behind an office podium and expect to scare your coworker when they come in because <laughs> you're too huge. It would have worked if I went to trip. He hid behind the front desk here at 98Q Country, and when I walked in, unlocked the door during lunch, he tried to he tried to jump out and scare me because he fell over his huger feet. It, yes, I do have huger feet. I apologize. Thank you once again for tuning in this week's local twist with... Tammy. And Dish. We will see you next week, folks. Have a great weekend. Go hit the button. Stick your finger up your nose. <laughs>